Hey, welcome to Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander. This is your place to be when you want to master your mindset, dive into your spirituality, have more fun, and basically rock your life. I interview guests from all over the world that are self-made millionaires, entrepreneurs, actors and actresses in Hollywood, influencers, all kinds of cool people with great stories and very inspiring lives. And Today, we are going international. We are going to Portugal which with my friend, Carla Biesinger, who's an Instagram expert and online creation coach. She has lived all over the world in Buenos Aires, in Mexico, New York City, Barcelona, and she's finally settled in Lisbon, Portugal. She's taught over 100,000 women how to master Instagram in order to grow their audience and income. And it's not just about Instagram today. We're really talking about how to conquer your fears and visibility and how to go beyond what you think is possible and how to really find your why and what you're doing so that you have inspiring action to take every day towards your goals and dreams. So you're going to love Carla. I adore her and she inspires me every day on Instagram. So here we go. Hey, Carla, all the way from Portugal. Good to see Hi, you. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? <laughs> Oh, you are so welcome. I wish we were in person. I'm going to, you know what? I'm just going to have to get the budget for this radio show to go to Portugal to see you there. How about that? I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome to see you. I've known Carla for a few years and I've just always been so impressed by your way that you build business and your courage and your freedom. And you've lived all over the world in different places. And I think that you just have such an awesome point of view of life. And that's what I really wanted to do you know, talk about today is the things that you've overcome to get to where you are, the the challenges and the great things about living in different places and, and building your business on your own. Because I think it's such a dream for so many of my listeners. Amazing. Yeah. So happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So with your, with your, you're in Portugal now. And so just for a little background, where else have you lived all over the world? So I moved to Australia when I was 19. I grew up in Germany and I just always knew I didn't want to live there. So as soon as I could, the day after I graduated from high school, I was on a plane to Australia. I ended up going to school there, was living there for almost six years. And then I was actually applying for my permanent residency. And while I was waiting to get it, I had this window of six months where they allowed me to leave the country and so i decided to go to argentina because i've always wanted to go to south america i wanted to learn spanish and really just have an adventure so i moved there had so much fun was living in a big house with 10 people and just partying all the time and then basically met my ex-boyfriend who's from england he was living there at the time with his best friend who's a chef from thailand and they had just started doing these dinners, like they call them um, closed door restaurant dining experiences. So they were basically hosting tourists in their living room. And I just kind of, you know, fell into that. I didn't want to leave Argentina. I couldn't get a job. And so in the end, we decided that I was just going to work with them. And so basically for four years, we were working together, moved from this living room closed on a restaurant into a real restaurant. We got an investor and kind of took it like really big. And that was really fun for a while. But then there were just, you know, with, with like building such a big business in a country where you don't really know what's going on, where you don't really speak the language, it was really difficult. And also, you know, I've always had this dream of being able to travel and being able to move around and having a restaurant really doesn't allow you to do a lot of that. It's really like be there, make sure everything's working, everyone's doing their job. So if I felt really restricted and in the end decided to leave and then took a job in Mexico working for a friend uh, for an online marketing agency just for six months because I was just lost. You know, I didn't really know what I was going to do, went through the breakup and I was 29, I think at the time and was just very lost. And so this friend offered me the job and I just kind of said like, okay, better than going back to Germany. And then while I was living in Mexico, I got this idea of uh, starting my own business, creating online courses. And I actually started out creating online courses about social media for restaurant owners and for food entrepreneurs, basically, because that was my background, but my, I studied marketing. So I kind of merged the two. And then worked on my first course, which is still one of my um, 
best course is the Instagram Secrets to Success course. And then actually moved to New York because that was my other big dream was at one time before I turned 30, live in New York City. And so I moved there during my first year in business, um, was really broke. Like I remember I was making about $1,500 a month my rent was about fifteen fifty, so every month was just like, <laughs> how am I gonna like survive? But I just wanted to be there so badly, and yeah, just made it happen. I would be in New York for three months, then go home to Germany, stay with my mom, save money, go back to New York, and I did that for two years, and then kind of came to a point where I realized, okay, it's very difficult to get a visa in the U.S., and it's just my business still wasn't at a point where I was, you know, like making tons of money so it was still a struggle and so in the end i decided to move back to europe and kind of go all in with my business i invested in a business coaching program that was quite expensive and so i kind of took all my money went for that and decided okay i'm gonna go to europe it's a lot cheaper to live here i don't have the visa problems and that's kind of how i ended up in portugal Oh my gosh. Well, what an, what an amazing, uh, unexpected background, <laughs> right? Of life. Then, and, and that's what I want to ask you about. Cause it's just so interesting. So in this experience of all these different places, so what I'm hearing when you're saying this is you just said yes to s- these different opportunities of Argentina and Mexico and New York and going back to Europe. And most people don't have that courage to just say yes and lean in So can you remember a specific moment where you had a choice point and you just said, yeah, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I think, you know, to be honest, the most difficult yes, I think, was actually moving to Portugal. So before coming here, I was living in Germany. I moved back to Berlin just because it was easy and it was kind of a, you know, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. And I was there for six months and I was really unhappy. Like I moved there in November. It's like gray and cold and miserable for the next five months. And I love the sun, right? I'm like a tropical baby. (laughs) And so I was living there and every day I was just like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think this is for me. But I also don't know if I can move again and if I can can start over again because I've done it so many times and, you know, the older you get, it doesn't really get easier. But I met some guy at some travel conference and he told me like, I think you would really like Lisbon. And so I just kind of started looking into it and I just kind of had this like curious feeling inside of me. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try it because I know like this isn't working for me and I know that I can change my reality, but I have to do something right. Just by sitting here and feeling like upset and sorry for myself because it's cold and rainy like that's not going to do anything. So I came to Portugal Mm -hmm. for a like two month kind of trial. And I just loved it from day one. It was just, wow, this is an amazing place. I'm going to do it. And then I just had this like feeling inside. I was like, this is, this is the right way. Like I've learned over the years to really pay attention to that gut feeling and that feeling like when something feels right to really trust myself and to go for it. And when something feels wrong to reflect and then to make the decision, like what's like, what can I do? How can I change things to just change the way I wake up every day and the way I feel every day? Well, it's pretty amazing because you said uh, you knew you had to change your reality, but you also knew you had to do take action to do that. And I think that's one thing where in, you know, this personal development world and manifestations and all of this, that that gets lost sometimes of like, it's easy to be like, oh, I wish something were different. And, you know, I wish I had more money. I want to make more money or I want to partner or I want to lose weight. But in order to create that, there also has to be action to back it up. And it sounds like you are really good about getting into action around the things that you want to shift. And I'm curious because you are an Instagram expert and you've helped, you know, 100,000 people all over the world with their Instagram, which is amazing. And that's a big hurdle. And we're going to talk about that, about this, you know, this visibility piece that comes online with social media. But you, so you help people do this all the time of basically they want to have a social media presence or they want to build their business, but you actually help people get into action around it. And I'm curious in your experience, what do you see are the biggest blocks to people actually creating it? I think pretty much all of my clients have that fear of being visible and have that fear of showing their face in the stories of being on video. 
um, of posting photos of themselves. And to be honest, the first two years, I was only posting photos of food because that was my niche. And so I was hiding behind the camera. And it took me two years to actually share a photo of me on my feed. So it's definitely you know, a learning experience. And it, it takes like taking baby steps and building that confidence. And that's something like that confidence is really, it's not something you have or you don't have. It's really something you, you build. And, you know, when I have clients that are really scared of being on stories or showing their face, I always say like, just start by recording something where you're not showing your face, but you start talking into the camera. So people start hearing your voice. And then once you feel comfortable with that, then put on a filter so you look good and you feel like you look good. That's what filters are great for. And just, you know, retake it 10 times if you want to until you're happy with it. And then eventually you just start caring less. And, you know, I, I, I can't remember who told me, but they said the only person who cares about how what you look like on camera is you. And it's so true, yeah. right? We overthink so much, but people just want to connect with us, especially on Instagram with the stories. It's such an amazing way for letting your audience get to know you. And you want to show up as you, right? If you're the kind of person who runs around and sweats all day and a t-shirt, there's no point in like doing your hair and putting on tons of makeup because that's not real and that doesn't come across as authentic. Yeah. It's so good because I love that you said you have to take the baby steps to build the confidence. I always say this, you know, uh, people come to me all the time for confidence. You know, they see me and they're like, cause I am visible and I am out there. I don't have, obviously I don't have the shyness. You know, if you go to my Instagram, I'm not shy about putting myself out there. Um, but, and so people see that and they're attracted to that and they're like, Oh, I want that confidence. And people always think I was born with it, but I, I was born with a certain level of confidence, but I just remember as a young kid, the times when I was like not confident at all, but I'd still like show up and do the thing and be scared. And that's how I built the confidence. Yeah. And so that's what you're saying too. You just have to take the baby steps. You have to show up and then you build the confidence. You don't build the confidence and then do this. Exactly. And it's interesting in this Instagram world, um, especially of videos, because obviously I'm a video coach too. And so it's like, I understand these fears that come up and it is like so many fears about what I'm, what I look like. This is what happens when I've coached so many people through, um, you know, my lights, camera, cash video coaching course. And I remember one time a client, we did a video for her and she looked at it and she started crying and she was like, is that what my forehead looks like? Is that what I sound like? Is that what I look like? And it was just all these judgments, judgments, judgments. And so I get it that that's where our minds are is in judgment of self. And that's what I think is so beautiful about social media too. It's like, it helps you break through your own judgments of yourself because once you can get on camera, once you can start putting yourself out there, it's not somebody else judging you. We always think, oh, what are people going to say? I'm like, who are these people that are going to say these things? It's me saying it to me. And so I think what you do is so beautiful because you help people get over that and really be able to serve in a powerful way by spreading their message when they're not afraid to, sh to show themselves, basically. Yeah. And to be honest, I had a breakdown when I recorded my first video for my course. I, had a, I didn't have a webcam. I, ju I just had my built-in camera from my laptop that's from like 1997. <laughs> So the quality was so bad. And I just started crying as well. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's I, 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 it's a good example. And I remember you sharing that in a post or, you know, I'm on your email list. I don't remember where I saw it, but I remember you had pictures and you said it took me two years to, to put a picture of myself on Instagram. And you're an Instagram expert, an Instagram coach. And I was like, that is fascinating. But that's the level of fear that runs inside so many people. And it's not just for, let's call it social media. Like this conversation is obviously about social media and about being visible and about being confident and all of it, because that's your expertise. But it's so, this is a metaphor for life. It's like, where do you not show up in your life fully? Where are you hiding in your life? Because you think you're afraid of what someone's going to think of you when we are the only ones with these thoughts that are preventing us from doing anything. Yeah. And so how do you work with clients when they do get scared and they, they pull back and they, you know, are saying really mean things to yourselves? Like, what do you do in those moments with clients? I mean, you know, I think when it comes to working with clients, 
it's always like the main thing that drives someone and the main thing that's going to get someone to take action, even though they are scared, is like the, what's on the other side of that fear, right? How badly do they want it? I've been scared of doing lives. I've been scared of doing videos. I've been scared of doing, you know, live talking. But I'm so driven by what's on the other side of that fear that I'm willing to show up. And so I, I remind my clients of like, you know, why are you doing this? Like what's possible if you overcome this fear and if you say yes to taking this next step, like rather than focusing on all the things that could go wrong, at which they might, you know, I've done live webinars and my computer crashed in the middle of it and it was fine. I'm still here and I'm, you know, still managed to grow a business, but what's possible, like focusing on what's possible and what you can achieve when you say yes, I think that's so, so powerful to get out of that inaction and that fear and that stuckness. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Like really looking at what's on the other side. What's what's your, you know, that why? Well, let's dive into that. We're gonna take a little break, but I wanna, I wanna discuss that when we come back. You're listening to Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander. I'm here with my friend Carla and we will be right back. You're listening to Fun for Life Radio on Dash because you're happy and you're healthy and plan to stay that way. All right, here on Fun for Life Radio on the Dash Radio Network, we are all about having fun for life. And we have a mix of talk shows and music shows. And one of my delightful friends, Stacy, has the House of Basie, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome music program with all kinds of cool, funky, dark beats you can groove your hips to, have some fun, get sexy. So check out House of Basie on here on Fun for Life Radio. And we're back with my friend Carla B. Singer, and all the way from Portugal. Thank God for technology. And we were just talking before the break about what's on the other side of your fear. Basically, what do you want? And I remember you've done, you went to the Tony Robbins workshops, right? No, I haven't been actually. Oh Someone God, missed. I thought you had, oh God. You, yeah, you love it. Like it's so up your alley for sure. Um, but I what I remember that was my first really start in personal development. And that was like, I don't know, you know, 20 something, five, 30 years ago, something like that. And I remember that he said that in order to create change, we either move away from pain or towards pleasure. And that's where you see, like, let's just call it Alcoholics Anonymous. Let's, you know, people have a, have, you know, it's like, what's your, what's your bottom basically? Like people usually in that kind of sense and addictions and things have to get so hurt and the pain has to be so great for them to change. And then they change. Okay. So most people are going to move away from pain and, 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 but, but you can move towards pleasure. So I think it's interesting in this world we live in and call it entrepreneurship and building your business that like the, you don't have, you don't have enough pain, you know, like if yeah you want to put yourself out there on social media, you want to build your business, you want to create this life, but it's, you're not painful. It's not painful enough where you are in order to create change, right? Like yeah. if you have a nice life and like things are okay. So that's not going to drive you. So what you're saying is you got to go towards that pleasure. You got to, you got to really get clear in that What's it going to feel like on the other side? You know, if for this dream you have, whether it's to make $100,000 or a million dollars, it doesn't matter whether it's to have a partner, whether it's, you know, to, um, you know, have more happiness and joy in your life, whatever, to travel more, whatever your desires are, what's it going to feel like? Why, why are you so invested in creating this? And I think that driving point isn't clear enough for most people. Yeah, that's very true. So for you, like you, you're so driven and you're so like creating this awesome life. And so what is it for you? Like wh what inspires you so much to keep driving forward so rapidly and so amazingly? I've always had this idea of just freedom for me is one of my biggest values and just the ability to live somewhere where I want to live because I think I, I just really wasn't that happy growing up in Germany. Like I had a great, you know, my family is great. I had a great childhood, but I just didn't want to be there. But yet I couldn't really do anything about it, right? So for me, that ability to live where I want to live, to um, 
wake up at the time I want to wake up. I don't wake up to an alarm clock. And that's something like I love every morning, right? I just wake up when I wake up. Sometimes it's 6 a.m. Sometimes it's 8.30. Who cares? Um, and that ability to just do what I want to do and impact other people like while I'm doing it, that for me is what's driving me. And yeah, obviously I, you know, like this is the first time I'm actually living in my own apartment. I'm turning 34 <laughs> next week and I've lived with roommates all the way up until last year. So it's not like I have this huge ma mansion or, you know, a pool, like it's something that would be nice for sure. But I think for me, it's more just the feeling you wake up and you're happy and you're just excited about your day and about your life. That's really what drives me. And there have been times in my business where things aren't working that well and where, you know, it's stressful and I'm not sure if I can do it or if I have what it takes or, you know, like the first three years, I wasn't killing it. I was just kind of getting by and I was like slowly growing But there were many times where I thought about giving up, but it's like that that moment, you know, I've looked at for jobs online and I'm just reading those job descriptions. I'm like, oh my God, just, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> and then yeah. having that moment of realization, like, okay, I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to do one more thing differently this time and just keep doing. Wow. There's so much perseverance there. Yeah. I mean, that's like, because I, and I'm laughing because I did that too. I remember uh, when I first, first started my coaching business, you know, you know, I've been a business and life coach for, I don't know, 15 years now, but I, and people are always like, how'd you start? And I laugh. I'm like, you know, somebody, I mean, I have a background in spiritual psychology and I went to a, a spiritual coaching program. Like I have a background for coaching, right? It's not like I just started doing it, but it's like, but but I had to start somewhere. And I remember someone who were like, how did you start? And I'm like, okay, someone literally like I ran into at the chiropractor's office was like, oh, you're a coach. And I was like, yeah, totally. I'm a coach. Yeah. I've been a co you know, like whatever, whatever story I told her. And she's like, oh, can you help me? And I was like, yeah, totally. She's like, what do you charge? And I just remember my face like froze. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck do I charge? I have no fucking clue what I charge. And I was like, $50 a session. Like, I didn't even know. I was like, is that a lot? You know, I don't know. And, um, you know, but it's, It's funny because it's that perseverance. So when I first started too, I'm like you, the first few, year, first few years, I wasn't killing it. I was charging $50 a session. Hi, I live in Los Angeles. $50 a session is not going to get you far in LA. Let me tell you, y'all. And so I remember the same thing. I was looking for jobs online because I came from the corporate world. I had a very successful career in the fashion business in the corporate world for over a decade. And so I knew what it was like to work and make money and get bonuses and have two weeks off. And like, I knew that world very well, but it felt so constricting. So when I started coaching on my own and not making a lot of money, like you, like figuring it out, I remember the same thing, looking at jobs online and going, there is no fucking way I'm going to go to fucking office at 8 a.m. and we're still sick. I was like, nope, that is, I don't care how much I have to struggle it is not happening. <laughs> It's, there's nothing that brings you back to reality like that. Looking at all of those bullet points and you know, the way they write them and you're like, oh my God, this is just, I can't. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, no, no. But there's something in it. You and I both have that perseverance of creating. And I think that's because like you said, your vow, one of your core values, values is freedom. So it's interesting because you'll basically do whatever it takes to create freedom. So someone listening to this radio show interview could easily have freedom as a value, but not understand that it's the, you see, people think it's fine. People always say, I want financial freedom, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure your clients are like, I want to, you know, make my money online, whatever with my online programs and be financially free. Okay. Awesome. But what is that? It's like, it's like we're waiting the freedom, take out the financial piece. Freedom is freedom. Freedom is within us, yeah. right? We all have freedom. So freedom's already there, but then we're thinking, okay, I want freedom, but there's, there's requirements attached to it. And I think the key is to feel that value of freedom in whatever you're doing. Cause, cause people are waiting, right? People are like, your clients are waiting until they make $250,000 a year to feel financially free. Of course, the more money is going to you know, make things a little easier in that way. But in that freedom sense of that value, you get to experience that whenever you want. Yeah, that's true. And that's where I think is like, right? Like you, it gets missed of like, you don't get the thing and then get the freedom. You create the freedom within, you cultivate it just like confidence. You cultivate that freedom within yourself and then you have more freedom. And that's what I see in you. 
you you were cultivating that sense of freedom from the first minute you told us about Argentina. Yeah. And what do you think it is within you that was so understanding to to cultivate that instead of like waiting for it to happen to feel it? Because you you really did it like the right way, basically. Honestly, I don't know. I think it's just who I am, you know? And it, there have been times like when I was living in Argentina and the last couple of years were really tough. I was in a really bad place and I just couldn't make that change and I just couldn't leave. And, you know, there was a relationship and there was like money where I felt like if I leave now, I'm going to have nothing. Um, so there was like financial pressure or like codependence, really. So there were a lot of factors and it took me two years to make that decision. But, you know, I don't know. It's like I look at my mom, like my parents have been divorced for 20 years and it took my mom 19 years to move on. And I think like looking at her, looking at her not making any changes and choosing to stay in this reality where she clearly wasn't happy, you know, that, I think that's always been something for me where I'm like, I don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. You get, you, we all get to see things and experience things that we don't want in order to create what we do mm -hmm. want. And so that you had that model of like, yeah, that doesn't, I see the pain that that is in that experience and, and I want to choose something different. Yeah. Yeah. It's just cool. You, you, you lead a really, um, inspired life that I think so many people, cause you know, I mean, most of the kinds of clients that I coach always say like, I want to travel more. I want to, you know, go do things with my family. And like, you're like, Oh yeah. Like I'm going to move here and move here and travel here. And now you're in Europe and you can like travel anywhere. And you know, it's well, maybe yeah, not, not right this now. Moment with COVID, but, uh, <laughs> but soon <laughs> and in the past. <laughs> so I want to ask you about really about social media, because I think there's so many misconceptions. I'm a huge fan of social media. I always have been. I think it's an awesome way to connect, but there's so many misconceptions. This is what I always hear from people. Oh, I don't need to, I don't need to post what I'm having for lunch this day. And I'm like, that's what you think social media is. So, you know, you are the expert in this. So what's your uh, mission and intention with social media? So for me, I'm using social media and especially Instagram in my case, but whatever platform you choose, I'm using it as a strategic business tool, right? So I'm using it as a channel or a way for me to connect with potential clients, to connect with potential partners, you know, like we connected through a program, but we stayed in touch through social media. Um, and I'm using it, you know, intentionally, like, yeah, there's uh, obviously content creation in order to share value and in order to position myself as an expert and in order to attract my ideal followers or my ideal clients, there is that part of curating content. Um, and then, you know, like, that's why I love Instagram. Like I, I said it earlier, like I love to just show up in my stories. Like just before we came on here, I was just showing like, this is my setup. This is what I do just to let people in on the behind the scenes. So it's that combination of um, giving value, positioning yourself as an expert and then really connecting with people and like letting them get to know you, which like I love that combination. Yeah. It's a, it sounds very fluid for you. It sounds like it's a normal, like it, how I would describe it is you show up as a normal human being Yeah, in social media, Yeah, which that's why you connect with people. Yeah. And I think, you know, people, it can be overwhelming in the beginning and you're like, I don't even know what to post. I don't know, like if anyone cares and you just got to start putting stuff out there and pay attention to what resonates, right? People get so... Um, stuck in that, you know, um, analysis paralysis and wanting to create the perfect post or wanting to like always know like exactly what to say. And then they end up not posting for days or for weeks because they, they get stuck in perfectionism. But the truth is only by sharing different kinds of content, you'll start to realize like what actually resonates with your audience and what connects and what gets engagement. And then you can create more of that, but you've got to just start putting stuff out there, right? This is, if you wait for three months, you'll still have no posts up on your Instagram. You'll still be overwhelmed <laughs> and you still have no idea what to say. 
<laughs> oh my God, that's so true. I love that. You just have to start somewhere. And it's, um, and I know from my own experience, I do my own social media and and I've hired people in the past and that's been great. And I think hiring people to do it if you need to is awesome. But to do my own, I get stuck in that analysis paralysis of like, it needs to be perfect. It needs to say the right thing and it's got to make sure to resonate and da, da, da. And I can get stuck in that. And then I get overwhelmed and then I just move on to the next thing. So I hear that too, of just creating the content and not... Uh, I think it has to be perfect and not think it has to be the best thing you've ever created and just creating the content so you can get the feedback of kind of what works and what doesn't work. And you might be surprised like once you start actually creating content and then you get more comfortable in it too. But that, that I think it's that perfection. And that again, it goes back to like the judgments of like, Oh, is this for me? I guess my judgments would be like, is it good enough? You know? Oh, it's not going to be good enough. Like, it's not going to be as good as so-and-so or, or I've done better, you know, I've done better posts or should it be long copy or short copy? And there's just so many things that can get in the way of, instead of just being of service of creating content for the audience. Yeah. Basically. And I think that comparisonitis is just the, it kills you. Right. So, um, I, I, I think the, the, it goes, create before you consume. So go onto Instagram and share your stuff because before you even look at what everyone else is doing, because something will trigger you and then you get like (laughs) pulled in this black hole and then you feel really bad about yourself. You don't get out of bed. Like I've been there. (laughs) So (laughs) So, yeah, sounds like you know that. (laughs) And then certain accounts that trigger you, you know, you can mute them, you can unfollow them. You don't have to look at that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's so true. I think that's such a good, that's such good advice. Create before you consume so that you are, it's like how I view it as being of service. So it's be of service, you know, starting your day, starting that, whatever it is like of being of service and then look at other people's stuff, which is very helpful. So you're not getting in that trap of like, oh, they did such a good post. I mean, I do it with you because like your posts are amazing. I'm like, oh my God, like how long does it take her to write this? It's so insightful and it's so great. And so, and I can do that too. And I've done it many times, but it just feels like I, I can look at someone like you and be like, oh, it's just so easy for her. Oh, she just must like pop that out in 15 minutes, which I don't know if you do it. I have no idea, but it's just my perception when someone can look at me and think the same yeah. thing, right? And be like, oh, she's so good at like lining it out or whatever. And instead it feels like so challenging for me sometimes. So I get that comparison itis where I do that too. And I guess I'm saying this in this conversation with you for anyone listening to know that like that's normal. Like it's you know, social media is great and it does bring up all this comparisonitis, like you say, and it is something we all have to go through, you know, to kind of overcome that basically. So like, if you are listening and you get triggered by social media, like, don't worry about it. Like you're, you're, you're normal. (laughs) (laughs) It's very normal. (laughs) Um, so interesting. So we're going to take a quick break, but I, when we come back, I really want to dive into these little nuts and bolts about, um, Instagram and some, maybe some tools and tips that you can give our listeners to help them with their own businesses on social media. So we'll, chat when we come back. This is Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander. And there's a show, if you haven't listened to it yet, definitely listen to P. Lee Montilla's Truth and Tunes. She is a cultural music expert. She interviews producers, songwriters, artists. She has artists come on. I think one of the cool things she does is she has artists come on and they'll either talk about their album or they'll talk about the the songs that have influenced them and they'll play the music. And it's just so insightful. And I learned so much about music and actually the meaning of music and how it's created. So check out Peely Montilla's Truth and Tunes here on Fun for Life Radio. You are listening to Fun for Life Radio because a life without fun is hardly worth living. Okay, and we're back with Carla Biesinger, who is an Instagram expert and an awesome person. And you are the queen of Instagram. So I'm curious, in this world today, all people, we're going to just get some nuts and bolts about Instagram. So people always want engagement, engagement, engagement. So what do you do in your coaching programs. And what's your Instagram program called that is your big one? Instagram secrets to success. 
Okay. Instagram secrets to success, which is an awesome program that really goes through like how to use Instagram and, you know, how to create content and hashtags and all kinds of things to actually help you understand this platform. So I know people have gone through it and it's amazing. So that's a huge help. And, but also, so basically for anyone listening, like what do you think are the top things that someone needs to pay attention to? Maybe the top three things that someone needs to pay attention to when they're creating content for Instagram. Yeah. So first, obviously now on Instagram, there's different types of posts, right? You have your normal posts, you have videos, you have reels, you have IGTV and you have Instagram live, and then you have Instagram stories. So there's quite a few things. So what's working really well right now are reels. You really have the the opportunity to just get in front of so many more people because Instagram is really pushing that feature. So definitely, if you're going to take on a challenge, I would say do reels, try and just, it, again, it's going to be probably outside your comfort zone, right? Because it includes video. So um, if you're up for a challenge, I would say do 30 reels in 30 days and just do it. Look at what other people are doing. Um, look at what the trends are. Um, there's like trending songs. There's these voiceovers where people just kind of reenacting like uh, to the video. So just pay attention, play a little bit and just look at what's doing well and how you could get inspired. And you'll see if you do a video every day for 30 days, well, a reel every day for 30 days, you'll, by the end of it, you'll be like piece of cake. So that's one thing where I'm like, okay, this is the thing that's working right now. Then when it comes to normal posts, um, so in, you know, before there was just likes and comments, now you can actually also save posts and you can share them. And these, all of these are, you know, equally important and they all contribute to your engagement. But what I've started to notice is there are certain types of posts that get saved and shared more than others. So two types um, that you can easily create in something like Canva, um, which is a free design uh, website, are quote posts where you just pick an inspiring quote. You can Google one, you can find one on Pinterest or see like what someone else is posting. And you just post that, you know, with, um, you can create a template on, on Canva. You can even look for Instagram quote posts or Instagram posts to get like a nice design. Those do really well. And then a little bit more advanced are like little infographics where you're just sharing in a more visual form. So like I did one the other day that was six content ideas to get more saves. And then I just had like six little bubbles with like a word in them. And those get saved a ton um, and get shared a lot. And so obviously when someone shares your content, that's new potential viewers that will see your posts that might come over and start to follow you. Cool. So that's number two. And then... Number three, <laughs> I have to think, um, I think stories would be number three, just because it's such a big part of Instagram and people are actually watching more stories than they are scrolling through their feed. And the thing is with stories, they only stay up for 24 hours. So even if you just do a few every day, but you're showing up every day, um, you're just constantly uh, getting pushed in front of your followers, right? Whereas with uh, a post, they can have a longer lifespan. So you might only do one every other day or you might do like three per week and that's cool. But with stories, it's like showing up every day is is more important. And again, it's that building that know, like and trust factor that's so much easier to do um, through the stories than through like a, a static post. Very cool. That's really helpful uh, to understand this kind of process and what's working. And um, I took your Reels course. Uh, Carla has a free, like I think a four day or five day Instagram Reels course. And it was great. I learned so much. And I do love Reels. I think they're so fun and they're so fun to watch. They're so creative. Um, so that's cool. That's very interesting. And and then the other different types, the quote posts and the infographics and of course, stories and how you how you uh, how to understand how stories are more watched than the feed, which is very interesting. 
And it is easier to get into stories to start because it is, you know, 15, 20 seconds and like, it's no big deal. And you can put filters and, you know, lots of options there. Um, I think the challenge, like personally, the challenge that I have and that I hear from clients too, is just the time it takes to even like creating a reel. Like I love reels, but I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I'm spending so much time creating a reel, let alone stories, content, you know, cause I like to put all the stickers and all the stuff in stories too. So what do you recommend for, you know, anyone listening where the time is a factor of, you know, you, you don't want to spend two hours, even an hour, like creating a post or something. So what do you, how do you help clients in that way? So I would really break it down into the different categories, right? So if say you're going to do, say you're going to post three times a week, so that's 12 posts for the month. Um, So one of those is going to be a quote post, You can literally come up with a list of inspiring quotes when you go into Pinterest in no time. If you have a template in Canva, it will take you like less than 10 minutes to create those. Say one is a photo of you. So I would recommend um, maybe either doing an hour session with a photographer or just getting a friend who doesn't mind taking a few photos of you and just going out in the street or like in your apartment, putting on a few different outfits and just create those Um, photos, learn how to do some basic, very basic editing with like Lightroom presets, uh, which you can get for a few bucks. Um, And then you have those kind of ready to go, right? So then the only one that's going to maybe take a little bit more time are the reels. And they will take more time, but it's worth putting in the work and the effort. Um, And I would definitely also say like batch create them. So maybe throughout the month, as you're looking at other people's reels, write down some ideas, maybe even save some links for what you could do. And then just set aside maybe an hour, maybe the first time it's going to take you a little bit longer. And then you just create the, it's, they're 15 seconds long, right? So they're not like this crazily produced, like you don't have to do that. You don't have to start with that. Um, You can literally do like these um, I call them point and move reels where, you know, it's just you looking into the camera and you point somewhere and then text appears. So you don't have to do any kind of crazy acting or anything like that. And so again, if you have a list of what ideas you have and what you're going to create, and then you just have some time set aside where you batch create them and then you you have them ready to go. I think like really spending more time on actually planning ahead Um, then, you know, trying to do something on the day because you're like, oh my God, I haven't posted in three days. I need to come up with a real, you're going to struggle, right? Because inspiration doesn't usually strike when you're stressed (laughs) out. (laughs) Right. That's so true. (laughs) That's funny. So (laughs) really getting in the habit, like I usually plan out my posts on a Sunday. So I just set aside a little bit of time and I have all of my images ready to go. I use an app called Plan. It's um, P-L-A-N-N. There's other ones as well, like Later or Planoly. They all kind of do the same. So I have all the posts uploaded in there. And then I just write out my three captions. And sometimes Uh, when I don't know what to say, I just use an older caption that performed well and I repurpose it that way. You know, or um, sometimes I repurpose an email or mm, I don't know, like... Sometimes I feel creative and then I just write out a bunch of posts. Um, So really like when you're feeling inspired, make the most of that. And then sometimes there's days where I don't feel like I have anything to say and then I might just not post for a couple of days and that's okay as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love how you, um, you make it so simple of just like, if you're going to post three times a week, which to start, that's awesome. Like three times a week is great. And really just, just set it up so you can win of like one day's a quote, one day's a personal picture and a story and one day's a real boom. Then you have your, then you don't have to think about it. What I'm always trying to help people with is don't take the brain power to go think about something. Yeah. Cause whenever we're using that precious brain energy of like, oh, I've got to post something today. What is it? And then you have to go back in the data bank and figure it out. You're, you, we're wasting your brain energy. So in order to help with that, it's like, just set it up to win. Like, okay, Monday is a quote. Wednesday is a picture of me and a story and Friday is a reel. And then you just keep reproducing that. So that's really helpful just to simplify it in that way. Cause I'm that person totally where I'll be like, I try to get ahead of it. Like I try to plan, but I'm like, God, I never can freaking do this. So that's me like on the day. I'm like, Oh shit, what am I going to say? I got to get inspired. Oh my God. I'm so stressed. How about, you know, what am I going to get inspired about? And then it's like, 
you know, whatever, you know, usually I can overcome it, but it's that stress of like, oh, what am I going to post today? Instead of like, if I had the, you know, it lined out, it'd be easier. And one thing that I do that I think helps for me, because I'm not necessarily a writer, um, I, I can write, but I'm more uh, of an audio talker. So I use an app called Otter, O-T-T-E-R. And when I speak into the app, it automatically transcribes it. And it it's so great. So it transcribes it. And then I just I just um, send it to my notes on my phone and then I can edit it. And that for me is like a game changer. So instead of me like, oh my God, when am I going to write? I just start talking since I am a talker and then boom, then it's there. I just so I love that as a little, <laughs> yeah, totally. You'll love it. It's so easy because then I just go in and edit it and put some emojis in there and call it a day. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's really helpful. So thanks. That's really helpful for all this. And do you still have your reels course, the, the free reels courses on Facebook or um, where is that? It's actually, we took it off Facebook. It's part of a bundle now. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So if anyone's interested, you can just send me an email or a DM better. <laughs> since I'm- yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. And what is your, um, what's your Instagram account? Yeah, it's just Carla, C A R L A B I E S I N G E R. Okay. B I E S I N G E R. So go to Carla B. Singer and uh, DM her, and you can get information about the bundle exactly. that has that. Uh, Instagram reels in it, which is awesome. And you also have, you've helped, I have, again, I'm on your email list and I like consume your content because I learned so much from you. And you just sent out um, hashtag helper, like um, groups of hashtags. I actually saved them. They're in my phone. So you, so tell me a little bit about the hashtag helper and how that works. Yeah. So one thing that I get asked about all the time and that I think is just this big kind of mystery about Instagram is hashtags and how they work and how to find the right ones. So we, together with my team, we've put together a spreadsheet that's called hashtag helper where we, and we continue to build on it. So it's all different niches. I think we have over 35 different niches now where we do the work and we find the right hashtags for you. And then once a month, we send it out to my list, um, but you can get access at any point and uh, it's free. You can just go in and find your niche and copy and paste the hashtags and use them for your posts. And if your niche isn't on there, just let us know and then we'll in- find some hashtags for the next month. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, good. And so we just DM you or go to your Instagram page and you have the link yeah, for that. Yeah, it's actually the link in my bio. So that's super easy. Okay. Okay. Go, go to Carla's uh, Instagram page and then just go to link in bio. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That's super helpful because it is, it can, hashtags can be so confusing and there's a whole art to it. And so again, if you follow Carla, you'll learn about it and then get the free hashtag helper and then you'll automatically have hashtags and you don't really have to think about it, which is huge, <laughs> huge, hugely helpful. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, cool. You are definitely the Instagram queen. It's um, you just, I, I love how you make, you simplify it. Uh, which is, I think, what we all need. And the intention of being really, you know, to help people and make an impact through their social media and to build connections and build business is very important for, you know, anyone that is an entrepreneur or has a business to understand how to utilize this platform in a powerful way. So this has been really great today. All right. So now we're going to do one of my favorite parts of my show is your hot seat questions. So these are just off the top of your head whatever. There's no right or wrong. I'm just going to ask you a few things. So since you live in Portugal, Carla, what's your favorite thing about living in Portugal? Honestly, it's the weather. Like it's so sunny here all the time. It's beautiful. I'm so close to the beach. Um, The city is beautiful. I live in Lisbon and 20 minutes from here, I'm just on the coast. It's honestly, it feels like California, but it's a lot cheaper. (laughs) (laughs) Everything's a lot cheaper than California. (laughs) Oh my God, that's cool. I didn't know it was such beautiful weather like yeah. that. I think it's over 300 days of sun. So kind of like California. Oh. oh my God, that's so great. And then what's the temperature? Like what's the average temperature Ooh, like? I'm bad with Fahrenheit. Um, oh, I know. I know we have that. Well, you can tell us in yeah. Celsius. So what is it? It's actually pretty much like LA weather, I think. Like in, in the okay. winter, it's like 18. Okay, so 72 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of LA's average, and that is 22 yeah. degrees Celsius. So you're kind of around yeah. that, basically. Gets a bit hot. Oh, in God, the yes, summer, that's lovely. But it's nice. Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, that's awesome. Um, okay, cool. Next question is What did you think you were going to be when you grew up? Actually, when I was really little, I always wanted to be part of a circus. <laughs> 
I just thought oh, it was so gosh. fun to just move around with like all the animals and jump off like a trapeze or I don't even know what you call them. That is awesome. Oh my God. I love that. I've never heard that. So I love that so much. Amazing. Um, guess that didn't happen. No. But that's probably okay. <laughs> the moving around did. I'm like almost ready to get exactly. a dog, but apart from that, no, no crazy animals. <laughs> in my oh my god, that's so cute! I love it. And so in that, you know, I, I it, like I think when we're kids, we have this, or even as adults, like we have an image of what we think life is going to look like. So as you grew up as an adult too, you're still very young, 34, but it's like let's call it in your 20s, like. What did you think life would look like at this age? Ooh, that's a good question. So m my dad is a doctor and I think he, until maybe two years ago, he always had this idea that I would still become a doctor <laughs> and <laughs> like it's not happening. <laughs> but yeah. you know, his, he was always working really hard and he was away a lot. Like I just remember, you know, having breakfast with him and then, when he would come home, I was kind of already in bed. So I definitely knew that that's not what I wanted. So I, again, had more that image of like, I don't want this as like my yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, that's so good. You see what you don't want and you see what you do want. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm, I'm older than you. And, uh, you know, I remember so many times as an adult, um, going, you know, this isn't what I thought. It, it, for me, it was a grieving process of like, this isn't what I thought my life was going to look like. I could, I feel that emotion now. I could cry because there were so many moments in my life where I was like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Like, I, I don't know what I thought it was going to be, but it was, you know what I mean? Like whatever image I had in my head that didn't match reality, it was like, whoa, this doesn't feel good. And it, but it, the thing that I've realized as I've grown up is like, it's, like, again, what, what did I think it was going to be? Mm -hmm. It's, it's this elusive image that I couldn't even wrap my arms around. So it's this, it's this, it's this fantasy that life should look away. And, you know, as a personal, you know, as a life co rock, your life coach and business coach, it's like my opportunity with clients is always like you, wherever you are is the perfect place you're supposed to be. There's no, because it's reality because it's where you are. So life is for you and it's only, it's for you in every moment, not just in some moments. Yeah. So even when life shows up as challenging or you might think you, you should be somewhere else, that's just the thoughts around it that are clouding the reality of like, no, 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 life is, it's really beautiful and amazing right here, right now. And that's always my work is like to remember like, mm. no matter what's happening, you know, cause I can still look at my life and be like, oh, I should have more money and I should have a husband or whatever this, you know, and I'm not, neither of those actually like resonate with me anymore, but, um, or I should have a, you know, bigger house like that would like, oh, I should have a bigger house and like a nicer car, but that's still just thoughts. Mm. It's just this fantasy of like this, this, uh, some other person's life. And when my life is pretty great. Yeah. So I think when we can come back to that of like, oh, life is just exactly as it needs to be in this moment. And then we're all like happy. Yeah. And that's what we want, right? <laughs> we won't be happy. Um, okay. What advice would you give to your 21-year-old self? I would say don't worry so much. Like you're going to be okay. <laughs> I'm definitely a worrier. Or oh, I was much worse. Oh, my God. It's so funny, Carla, because literally – Every guest I've interviewed says the same thing. No way. Like every single, I swear to you, every single person in a different way. Some people will say like, chill the fuck out. Everything's going to be fine. Stop worrying so much. Every single person <laughs> says the exact same thing. So I'm like, wow, this is fascinating that all of us say to our 21 year old self, like, don't worry so much. Like, it's all fine. And so my, so what I'm hearing in this is like, how do we give that to ourselves now? Mm. Right. It's like, how do we, cause that anxiety, that worry that, you know, like whatever it is that's still running somehow in most people somehow. Right. And it's like, or we have to work hard or whatever it is. So it's like, if we can give, if I can give that to myself now of like, don't worry. Yeah. Like it's all going to be okay. Then then that's a great mantra. Yeah, right? totally. Totally. Right. Instead of like stressing about the future or. I try to you know. less and less, you know, 
think about the future because that's really when you're creating the stress, right? Because, and there's so many things that could happen and could not happen and might go wrong and, you know, who knows? So it's almost, it's such a waste of time, I find. It's such a waste of time. So how do you keep yourself in the present? Um, well, I personally, I, I generally have never really had like the five-year plan or the 10-year plan. Like that's just not who I am. Um, I don't really make plans more than like a month ahead. But when I get in these kind of spirals where I keep thinking about like future problems or like, you know, what if things stop, stop working now? Like one thing that I've learned is to look at facts versus fears and to look at like, okay, what is really a fact here? Um, and what is just, you know, thoughts and like interpretations nice. and just things in my head. And I find that that really helps me to calm down. And, you know, even thinking at like, okay, what's the worst possible scenario? Like if that happened, how could I like bounce back? And uh, I actually recently attended a fear setting workshop, which was so cool. And he talks about um, the, th I, I'm going to butcher it now, but he basically says like, okay, come up with your biggest fears. And then you first of all, look at, how you could prevent them and then how you could repair them if they actually happened. And then he looks at what is actually, there's a third thing I can't remember. And then he looks at what is the cost of inaction? So if you just don't take any action now because you're so like um, taken on by this fear, what's the cost of inaction? Like where will you be six months yeah. from now, a year from now? And that for me yeah. was huge. It's a big thing, right? To face the, to look at that. I love that. I love that to actually look at the fears. And I, it's really cool that you say you look at the facts, not the fears. Mm -hmm. um, I, this has been so great with you today. We have to wrap, unfortunately, and I'm having so much fun with you, but this is awesome. And I'll tell you the fact from today, I've learned a ton from you. And I know everyone listening has learned a ton from you and go check out Carla on Instagram. Carla B. Singer, B E I S I N G E R dot com. Get all her fabulous Instagram goodies and just continue to be inspired by Carla. You're inspiring to me. I just watch you and I'm like, oh, and I can't wait to come visit you in Portugal. Yes. So let's make that happen. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's right. been so amazing to be on your show. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, love. Bye. Bye.